Hello and welcome to another Rock and Rockstar. This time I'm catching up with Peter Mosdale. Now, Peter is a founder of Upstate in Sydney, in possibly one of the best areas in Sydney, if not Australia. Peter, welcome to the show. Pleasure to be here. Uh, Peter, tell me about your area. I, I guess one of the best areas in Sydney. Yeah, look, we're all biased. We all love where we live. But yeah. uh, Northern Beaches of Sydney, Australia is one of the best places in the world in my books. Yeah. We're blessed to have a really great mix property-wise of top-end property as well as a nicely sort of densely populated area, uh, which is the epicentre of our market being DY. There's approximately 8,000 apartments here uh, and then surrounded by beautiful beaches and uh, also that top-end premium property around it as well. Let's get a background now on the business. Uh, tell me about Upstate. Sure. So, look, Upstate's a business that's evolved over 15 years. Um, so, Lachlan Yates, my business partner, and I bought into a small business 15 years ago with David Gilmore. We had 100 managements at that time. We're turning over about, call it 100 grand in management fees. Yep. Since then, we've gone through acquisition and um, just business growth. So, we uh, grew the business to about 300 managements in that single site and grew the sales team from a, a team of five to approximately a team of 20. Then after that, we uh, moved and had opened a second office and we uh, acquired a large rent roll there of about 700 managements. Grew that from its staff of about 15 to about 25. Um, organically kept growing along the ways, made further acquisitions in the commercial space and uh, then we shut our Colroy business and merged it with our DY business and had about 40, 45 people under one roof in DY. Mm. Uh, it was under a Rain and Horn franchise, had that for a number of years and then uh, the beginning of this year we moved down nearly 2,000 managements and our 65 staff under one roof. Uh, into a brand new purpose-built office, um, over a thousand square metres, and um, yeah, that's when we launched our brand under yeah. uh, under our own uh, under our own shingle. Peter, tell me about your property management business. How important is that to the business overall, and how do you drive it? Look, property management is the core of any good real estate business. In our view, uh, we've always been focused on growth you know we've been running a growth balance sheet the whole time we've been in business you know that's just our mentality Lachlan and I are both you know now in our 40s we started in our 20s um, we're not in a profit taking phase of our business life so we're happy to to sacrifice a bit of profit for growth our expectation is that how important is that to the business hugely important we've seen it in the short 15 years I've been a business owner, a choppy sales market with GFCs and you know the latest funding correction, and we can see sales volumes dip and, and, and plummet, actually. We've seen sales volumes off by half what they were a few years ago in our market. Uh, having said that, we run a large sales team. Uh, I'm happy for the sales, well, I tolerate the sales team not making big money because it feeds our new business department yeah. and uh, they do coexist together. We understand that and that doesn't bother us. So, you know, sales is very much a part of our business, but property management is where our asset is. Obviously, everyone's got to calculate. If you've got 2,000 managements, it's a pretty big asset yeah. um, and we're, we're committed to feeding that and growing that. Peter, has your growth been organic or have you purchased any rent rolls over the years? We're purchased and grown organically. Like right now, our new business team uh, bring in anywhere between 32 and 38 managements a month. We would lose anywhere between four and 10 a month just through you know, owners moving in, just, yep. the, just the natural churn. Yeah, Obviously, uh, you know, we don't tend to tolerate um, preventable loss. Uh, it's not something that anyone likes to know about. That's right. So, you know, we're running an organic growth balance sheet, but then equally we do have debt on our balance sheet. And every sort of three to five years, you know, we are looking at strategic mm. acquisitions that make sense to us yeah. Um, yeah. culturally, geographically. Yeah. And, and client synergy. It's interesting there that you mentioned those three areas. Uh, how brave are you geographically? And I mean, how far will you go afield to take a property? 
Well, look, we're blessed in a way that we're situated on the coast. So if you drew a circle around our business, 50% of it doesn't exist because it's in the water, so number one. To the south, we're, we're geographically bounded by the harbour with Manly, and that's realistically only about five kilometres away. Yeah. To the north, we're bounded by pretty much Mona Vale, the peninsula, Palm Beach, and then that's we've got a, a geographic boundaries north and south and west well we probably don't need to look further afield than sort of let's say french's forest and if i drew a circle around that said how many roofs are there you'd be looking in the order of 150,000 roofs so it's quite a large market we can exist in within a short radius yeah. so I'd, I'd happily work a a strong 5k radius if not seven i don't i wouldn't go 15 to 20 kilometers yeah. i think that's just a bit too far do you have any pressure on fees and and if so how do you handle that peter <laughs> fees are a constant discussion uh, but so is service um and a, a point of difference and look your bdm needs to be held accountable to the fees that they're pitching and that's a constant battle because it's easy for them to get numbers and bring the, the deals in the door if they lay down on fee. Mm. Um, but then if you have that training exercise with them and show them that 1% less on fee might be an 18% difference in the net um, revenue of that one management, yeah. you can pitch it to them pretty simply that, hey, look, you could do 10% you know, less numbers, but just work a tiny bit harder on fee yeah. and you'd be making more money. So, you know, that is a constant pressure. We do have multiple fee levels um, we've tested everything from a self-managed thing of two percent where it's very much access to a portal right through to a full uh, airbnb short stay option that's at 20 percent but the majority of our fees in our market are realistically 5.5 to 7.7 percent uh, you know you do see that uh, and that's pretty common and it's just how you pitch against that yeah, the Airbnb style of business. Has that been a major part of your business and your development? No. No, it's not the wholesale market of our business. We've probably got 20 managements in it. Yeah. But it's, it's a feather to our bow. It means you can exist within our ecosystem. It means that we can help a long-term client that might want to enjoy the benefit of that for three to five years whilst they do other things, but we don't lose them. And then when they come back, we might be there for the sale, we might be there for the ongoing asset property management. Um, you know, so we're just in concentrating on not losing people out of our ecosystem, yeah. uh, but our wholesale market is traditional property management. Has technology, would you say, uh, given you that ability with your team to keep them more focused on service? 100%. So my view would may be challenging and, and look, I'm not a property manager, I'm a business owner and my job is to uh, drive our team uh, to achieve the, my goals and part of that is researching and implementing new technologies um, and systems and ways of handling things. My view is that the property manager of the future is a customer service centric person that will just solve problems and make people feel good. Um, I think the answers these days are available readily. You know, if you want to know something, Google it. Um, so I don't think we're the gatekeepers of information as much as we used to be. I think that, you know, we are the gatekeepers of service. That's, that's what we're here to provide, a seamless transaction that makes people feel good about using your services. And we are in a more and more affluent society that people are happy to pay for experience and services. So when we're hiring people, we're talking about what's your obsession in training, how good are you at evolving, and how customer service centric are you, rather than how many times you've been to tribunal and what's your experience with the act and things like that. Obviously you need those skills, but you can also learn skills. I think the other things are more innate and you know, you're either a, a thirsty person for knowledge, you're either a customer service feel good person, or you're not, is our experience. And look, I may be wrong, but that's just what we've found. Peter, I think you're spot on. Uh, the focus on service is, I believe, absolutely critical. Taking away a lot of those back-end tasks and allowing more time on customer satisfaction. Tell me, have you done much with outsourcing? Look, the reality is we missed the boat on the 
uh, let's say, outsourcing to Clark and, and, and those bigger sort of offshore operations. I took the view, once again, happy to, to be wrong, but we took the view that there's still people, they need management, and there's a big time and infrastructure investment in setting that up. Mm. And there's a break-even point of any business model. Like, I wouldn't do that for one person. I'd do it for 20 people, but I wouldn't do it for one because uh, our view is to manage two people or 12 people still takes the same amount of management skills. So we held back on that where we're seeing inroads is more in tech. And so I can see the tech piece picking up quicker, whether it's AI automation of mundane tasks or uh, just better systems and processes within your business. And that's where our focus is. Yeah, are you moving in that area now in, into AI? Well, yeah. Every... Yes, we have not implemented a solution that we're happy with yet, but every week I'm in a meeting about it. Um, we're a little bit slow to hire, quick to fire, or a little bit slow to jump, but all in once we jump. I don't like to chop and change. So once again, if we need to do another three to six months of due diligence before pulling the trigger on an on a integrated solution across projects, commercial, residential, property management that involves a data lake and lead sourcing as well as automated uh, replies. So if we can find a one solution as opposed to a massive app stack, that would be the, the, the ideal play. Yeah. However, we have implemented you know, technologies as they become available the whole time. Simple. What about technology for you personally? Is there any tech that you'd not want to be without? Is there one piece of tech that you love with playtime, work time? doesn't really matter. Look, uh, I, I, I'm obsessed with it, whether it's an Apple Watch or an iPhone or an <laughs> iPad Pro or, yeah. or um, any and all of the above. Like what, a, what's an iPad Pro? I haven't heard of that. What's that? Basically, it's an iPad that's oversized to 12.3 inches or something. Yeah. It comes with a stylist. And um, I can I don't have to have pen and paper in meetings anymore. I can actually write on that. It's perfect for signing documents. It's um, TV size. It's 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 basically goes with me everywhere. It looks slick and it definitely passes the test when you're in front of a client and you've got something that you're you're writing away. And the, the interaction with the stylus is the best I've seen in the market. So, are you an Apple man? Yeah, are you 100% Apple? I'm not. I love a PC. My wife and I have the battle of getting about it all the time. I can't use an Apple PC, uh, but every other bit of tech I, I, I'm, I, I'm immersed in. Yeah. Peter, thanks for your time. It's been fabulous. And congratulations on what you're doing with the business. My no, pleasure. And it's not all about me. It's about the team around us, Simona Sabera property manager and all the team that do this. As I said, it's not me in the, in the, 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 the trenches day to day. I'm just here to help guide the ship. But we're supported by the best people in the business and I wholeheartedly believe that. Yeah, well said. Uh, thanks again, Peter. Uh, it's been a real pleasure chatting with you today. Thanks again. See you, Kevin. Well, that's it. Join me next time for another Rock and Rockstar. See you then.